I think it was in apricot, wasn't it? Well, it was eventually. Eventually. The, the first thing they threw in my mouth, I didn't know it was happening, <laughs> <laughs> was a chicken liver. Roll. A raw chicken liver. And that wasn't right. Because I'm a better actor than I could pretend like it was a raw chicken liver. <laughs> and when they put that in my mouth, I think they got the reaction on me they wanted to do. I couldn't stand it. I don't even like chicken. And a raw chicken liver, whoa. But I think it's interesting how I got the part in this. Part in this. You know, we were doing the casting, and uh, I asked uh, Tony, Tony Hickok, uh, Sharon and I, we did. What do you want for the priest? Big, little, green, white, tall, whatever you want. He said, I don't know, I'll let you know. So I'm up in my room on a Sunday morning and I get the call from Tony Hickok, who is the director. And he said, I want to meet you in the lobby. We're going someplace. I said, where are we going? I said, he said, I'm not telling you, come on down. So I'm down there, I get down there, and Peter Atkins, the writer, and Tony's there. They take me down to, and ride roller coasters all day long. We went to a amusement park, and all day long we rode roller coasters. So on the way home, when we got back home, I said, oh, okay, Tony, what do you want? He said, I want you. I've talked to you all day long. I've been auditioning you all day long, and I want you to be the priest. That's how I became the priest. We got two tickets on the way home and one down, I think. I, we were, he was going so fast. He, I said, Tony, I said, you're going to get a, 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 a ticket because I'm trying to slow him down. He said, don't worry about it. I said, a big state trooper is going to come with a big crew cut. It's going to look like a German uh, trooper going to arrest you. He said, no, they won't. Boom. Right then, we got arrested. He took us to the police station. I'm, I'm in the police station with Peter Atkins, the writer, and I'm looking at Tony, who doesn't care one bit about being arrested. In fact, it was kind of cool. And... <laughs> and <laughs> And, and I started, I burst out laughing. And this big trooper come over to me and he said, what are you laughing about? I said, well, nothing to do with this. I'm thinking about something else. Give me a break. You know? So they let Tony go. And we go back and get in the car. I said, I'll drive Tony. He says, no, nope, I'm driving. Whoop, 100 miles an hour again. We got home. That's how I got to be the priest in the airways. That's great. That's a hell of, I, I don't get to go to auditions like that. <laughs> it was a great audition. So let's open it up to the crowd a little bit. Who has a question? All right, let's start with you. Right over there. Hang on, we're bringing you a mic. Because we're professional. You just mentioned auditions. What was the auditioning process like for this film? What was the auditioning process like for whom? Um, for the films. I, I didn't get to audition at all. Clive just, uh, I rang Clive after a couple of years of not talking to him just because I, he wasn't around uh, to see what he was doing and he, he said, oh, I'm just about to make this movie. Do you want a part in it? So I said, yeah. He said, there might be a little bit of makeup involved. Is that okay? <laughs> said, yeah. Of so it was no audition for me. I don't know. Clive asked me. Very simple. Well, I, I'm not quite sure why they called me in, but um, I'm a classically trained mime artist, and now I can sort of mention that. I mean, it's kind of the uncoolest thing in the world. But I went into... <laughs> bing, bing. Um, <laughs> it's a glass wall, why? Um, and I went into the audition. Doreen Jones was the casting director. I met Tony Randall. Um, uh, he mentioned that he wanted me to be a center, but I didn't want to go to the audition because I thought they were casting for Chatterer, and I found that character far too scary, and I'm claustrophobic, and I thought I could, I could do what you, you did. But anyway, I knew what the word Cenobite was because I looked it up, and Tony Randall was convinced it was a word that Clive had um, invented, and I said, no, it's a, an actual member of a religious order, it's in the dictionary. And he said, no, Clive Barker invented it. And this little production assistant went, Barbie's right. You know, it is in the dictionary. And I think just out of revenge, he gave me the part because I talked back to him. Uh, I uh, got a last minute call because apparently uh, Clive and Chris Figg, the executive producer, had gone to Chicago and New York and Los Angeles and they, they couldn't find the actress to play the role, Kirsty. So they were on their way out, and um, there was a production assistant at what was New World at the time who said, I'm in a teenage drama workshop with this girl. I think she'd be right for it. So they called me um, and said, go here. And I cold read, and Clive said, your uncle's in your father's skin, and he's trying to kill you and have sex with you. Probably 
in that order, go. And <laughs> so I, I read and he said, do you want to come to London to screen test? And then Doug played uh, Pinhead and also my dad ah, in the I, audition. Yeah, the Chinese restaurant yeah. scene. Yeah. You were very nice to me too, because I was just like, wow, you know, and some fellow walked up to me and was like, fancy dropping them. I was like, dropping what? And he was like, your knickers. And I'm like, what are knickers? And I, I had no idea what anything was. And, and so I, I auditioned and flew home. I, was, I got on a plane, flew to London, auditioned with you, went back on a plane and flew home. So I was in Los Angeles within two and a half days. And then Clive called and he said, I'm really pushing for you. They want a name but we'll see how it goes, just know that I want you to do this. And then he called and said, you're in, we're in, so. Mm -hmm. Doug, didn't you have a good story with Claire when she, oh. you were reading at her? Yeah. Um, Claire nearly um, relegated me to a fascinating but obscure footnote in the history of horror films. Um, I also screen tested um, uh, two Julias and uh, Claire came out, having kept everybody waiting, because I think she was meditating in her dressing room. Uh, and the moment she walked out, it seemed to me there was no point in proceeding with the screen test. I mean, her eyes were revolving in her head, and she was Julia. Um, I was playing the victim with the weak bladder. Um, so all, all I have to do is walk in and then say, I need to go to the bathroom, where is that? And she says, uh, and I turn around, uh, and they'd, They'd given her a real hammer, and they put a big foam block on the taped to the wall of the sound stage, so she could hit that. So I say my line, I turn around and drop out of frame, so Claire is then free to swing the hammer. Um, and we did it, and I ducked out of frame, and I heard the thud against the wall, and there was a very, very long pause, and I was thinking, wow, it's Claire must be doing something very interesting, and a rather timid sounding voice said, cut. And I came up and everybody behind the camera was looking um, a little um, perturbed. And uh, Selwyn Roberts, who was the first AD, he just said to me, we, uh, he, he said, I don't think we'll do that again. I think we've got that, that's fine. And he just said to me, she missed you by that much. She really was not waiting for me to clear frame, but I, I had my back to her, so I couldn't see what was coming. But yes, if I'd been a little bit slower, I might have been uh, killed stone dead. And all have said, been talking about, wasn't there a guy that Clive knew was going to play Pinhead? But, <laughs> and that was also the reason why Claire Higgins didn't get to play Julia, because she was arrested for manslaughter. <laughs> being such I, a chick right now. Was there anyone else? I don't remember another Kirsty. Oh, good. I only had eyes for you. I dried. You what? Uh, I went up. Oh, you went um, up. Because uh, I decided I would learn. I'm playing Andy Robinson's part. Oh, you dried, um, like dried up. Yeah. Uh, so I said, no, no, I'll, I'll learn my lines rather than sit with the script on, on the table. And they said action. And I couldn't remember my first line. Dumbstruck by the beauty across the table from me. Oh. Oh. Ashley was looking pretty nice too. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. This one's for Ashley. I was wondering if you were excited on doing Hellseeker and bringing back the Kirstie character into the franchise? Uh, well, Doug called me at home and said, there's a cameo in this and Rick Boda, the director, would love you to play it. So it was four days, I got to see him and we ate a lot of sushi and drank a lot of sake trying to figure out how to justify that Kirstie would ever be evil. So they made it a dream. So it was, it was more to, to work with them again. 